What's up, everybody? This is episode 25 on the Nutrio Show. I got my man Swar in the building. What's up, man? Dude, 25? Dude, 25. We're, we're killing it, man. I'm just, we're, we're going through it, man. So um, um, when I always ask somebody, the first question is like, what's the origin, origin story about Swar, man? Like, where'd you come from? Like, how did it begin? Like, Well, first of all, my tag is uh, Swar because my last name is Suarez. So okay. take off the EZ, just get Swar. Gotcha. It used to be Swar Swar. And, yeah, I remember uh, that. I remember that. And people uh, had someone tell me, "Hey, why don't you just take off one of them? If you're gonna, if you're gonna get into things, you yeah. should probably make it a little, a little bit cleaner." Mm -hmm. So I took one off. It's just Swar now. And uh, yeah, I started playing uh, right before Smash Four came out. Um, I was at an internship in like a forest, and some dude had like a sick gaming rig, mm -hmm. and we're like, "Let's get on emulators." So. Long story short, we started playing N64 that night and ended up playing PM because, uh -huh. you know, you could just emulate all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. It's like, you know, 21st century. And uh, I loved it. I loved PM. That's how I started. Mm -hmm. I didn't compete ever, but we were all playing within each other and we all would, like get better by like reading stuff online. We didn't know about any of the wave dash, any of that stuff. Mm -hmm. And then, lo and behold, Smash 4 is also coming out. And then I got it like night of midnight release. And then... I was in Gainesville at University of Florida, like with the community and like the college kids always love playing. So we'd organize and play, and then um, it wouldn't be a while until I got like with Panda and all that. But yeah, when did that happen? Like, man, I was just do. I, I was already out of UF. I was definitely like not living in Baltimore um, or Connecticut. I don't even remember. But I had hit them up and said, "Hey, no one's doing something like this, like rankings. It's been like a year and a half since the scene started. Like, what do you what do you got in mind?" And they mm -hmm. said, "Oh, we got a couple people. We got uh, Zan from SoCal and Dom from Tri-State. Mm -hmm. They're interested as well. Why don't you talk to hit them?" And we started as like the three Musketeers, and then the rest is history. We took like the first year and a half of you know tournaments that had happened, and then it was you know in a day where like there was like an Apex, and then there was like a Smash Con, but. You know, not like every month, like yeah, last yeah, yeah. year. And, and that was getting crazy. Yeah, and so I think we're experiencing a little bit of that now since it's like a little slower. And the last thing before this was Genesis. Mm -hmm. Before All that. Right, so, so for like the – how you guys do the rankings, kind of like break it down. Like is it – do you – three like go over like all the stats at the end of six months or is it is it a year or like so it's twice a year twice a year okay yeah and right before the summer starts and then right before the year ends is mm -hmm. when the season ends and we started this three now we're nine so okay. you know we've got a bunch of different roles graphic designers people who program people who you know research and write and so um basically we take like what happens at the end of the six months mm -hmm. and then at the end everything simultaneously is calculated it's all automated um and the algorithm basically looks at like who you outplaced and who you beat yeah because that was my next question because like i'm trying to I'm not, i want to say comparing it but like how like people do like state prs like i got like a little insight of like how connecticut does it like oh, yeah, we yeah, look yeah. at the stats blah 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 and you know people like all oh, this person should be this because whatever but like i know is there actually like an algorithm that just goes bam here's the one through 50 and that that's mm -hmm. clear decided now is that is that how it is like yeah yeah it's been that way for a while now um basically inputting all the stuff from smash ug um like since it's automated so you just get all the sets and then you know the system doesn't know what a cosmos is or a Mr. I have no idea what a Cosmos is. Or, oh, come on. <laughs> or like a Mr. R or like a Nairo, but like those names are linked to a win yeah. or a loss, and those losses are linked to other losses, and eventually you just, yeah, you just get a 50 spit out. Um, we tweaked, we, you know, we've tweaked a lot of the parameters so that, you know, it's really looking at who you outplaced and who you beat, because we all know that like third at a tournament doesn't always mean the same thing at every tournament. Yeah, true. And, you know, if it's third at EVO or if it's third at, like, a Gums, you mm -hmm. know, or, like, an Invasion, that's, like, a different story as well. And, like, the most famous example I always refer to is the Buzz of Civil War. He got first at the hardest Smash 4 tournament ever, and he didn't beat a top player. Or, sorry, he didn't beat a top 10 player to do mm. that. Yeah, because there saying. were the upsets. There were, you know, he beat T. He beat Fatality. You know, Fatality got second. Yeah. But those aren't the type of caliber. I mean, no offense to them, but they're not like. Yeah, I, the, I know where you're going with that. Yeah. yeah so, like, saying. Zero got, like, 65th or 49th. MK Leto got 49, 65th. And it just happens. Brackets are everything. So, yeah. you know, who you outplace is more important. You know, if you 
get ninth and you lost the first and second, that means you lost to the two people who, you know, came first and second at the tournament. If you got ninth but you lost to fifth and seventh, that's a different story. Mm. So a lot of the win strengths are calculated through that and now yeah, all all automated, all computerized, so it's not a hassle. It's really just like the production that's a hassle. Mm. Like for making videos and doing all the other stuff we do when like we're releasing and presenting. Yo, the thing that I like when uh, I saw you would do at the the championships when you were doing your Oh, Suarez bar. Yeah, man. Like I like that live cuz like you like it was like it was very well done. Like I like yeah. you know, I like knowing all the, you know, the stats and like, the shit that you were doing. It's, I like it a lot, man. Like so can we see are we seeing that more Because I don't you did a little bit a little bit at Frost, but not as maybe at depth as the championship, but like Yeah. I mean Can we see more are we seeing more of you later on in bigger tournaments or like what's going on with that? So I'll be honest, uh the scene is not there yet. Mm -hmm. Um that really only happened because of the grit and ability of esports arena. Yeah. Uh when we had first talked with Bam and Luke, some of their head you know, managers and community managers about like how they wanted the finals to be styled and who were they who they were bringing in for talent. Mm -hmm. uh, I was originally going to be on the analyst desk, and when I found out that they were taking me and putting me at a at a bar, I was kind of like, oh, there's, that's not going to look good or this and that. But they, you know, incredible production value, everything that was needed so that it was like you know engaging and there's people behind me, and then we had all the numbers ready, so they were making graphics and that takes a lot of oh, coordination it, it takes like they were automating scripts to like have all the head-to-heads -head pop up you know we gave them their like all-time like matches and win rates so that you know when someone popped up like zero was like 167 and like you know 20 in 2017 in terms of like all sets won and lost against mm. everybody he's ever faced in any bracket including pool stuff um obviously pgr like those are like the top cut because you don't count pools and stuff like that yeah yeah um but, you know, it, it takes a lot and, you know, tournaments such as like Frostbite is admittedly a little bit more on the experience side, more on the, you know, providing like a venue for people to like do a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. and production is not exactly the focus. Yeah, yeah I, uh, I imagine. You know, 2GC, it's like really just like, you know, you're at the finals, you know, when you go to the finals, you're not you know like playing with vendor artists or like doing side events like you're there to watch the lakers and stuff and yeah so exactly that's really more what it was like and we could afford that mobility because since we had so many cameras and all these cuts and we had you know vicky doing interviews and upstairs at the analysis you have all these things like you know up and running and each of those scenes just in and of itself takes like you know two to three people to prep and execute from like the person upstairs mm -hmm. and the 20 computer control room saying all right cut camera five camera four pan we're cutting the commentary booth blah 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 blah. like that sort of production was only possible with like an in-house mega monster like them mm -hmm. so what we're doing now is kind of like styling me to be at events and do more sideline like you know how is it how are things going because as we as we saw like you know early on you know if you're going to talk about numbers, you need that graphic support. Oh, yeah, definitely. So at the 2GC, we didn't have, like, all the graphic support that would be possible to make it, like, stunning because mm -hmm. it was also a first run. But we had, like, topic bars. And, like, oh, yeah, We had, yeah, like, definitely. all that stuff coming in here. You know, they're, we're already pushing on all cylinders. So it's a little hard to, like, kind of, like, you know, really, really get that extra juice out of the whole system because, you know, you could potentially blow things up, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and the other thing, too, is that everything has to be done in that you know like if the buzz loses to whatever like round one like that becomes a story and we can't prep that beforehand so oh, the graphics definitely. have to be all made like day of or moment of mm -hmm. and that takes you know effort so i'll be at events um majors more in the capacity of like an extra cut that like you know when a match ends and it's just commentators being like all right and uh that was crazy john yeah it was bob well, it looks like up here we got running up. Who is that? Is that? And then, like, you know, they don't know. And then they're doing their button check. Instead of that, they're just going to cut to me for, like, whatever, you know? What what um upcoming, like, majors are you going to be at? Smash or Splash? Uh, I don't know. Probably not. Um, I, I know for a fact I want to make every effort to be at Super Smash Con. Definitely. Have you, have you been there before? Last year. Last year? I saw you there. Th we did year? the Smashies 2017. Okay. We did the Smashies. We had a PG Stats panel. 
Um, that event's a ton of fun. Oh, yeah, I remember the, you did the – I remember – because I, I, I listened to your panel because I think I, like, either that question. day – Yeah, because I was asking the question. I was like, dude, how is, like, the PG – I think, you know, how is the PGR actually done? Is there algorithm? Is it this? Yeah. Like, I was going to, like, really, what is, like, what's – Yeah, okay, I remember that now. Yeah. No, um, I definitely want to go there. I mean – it's a little hard. Like, 2018 is so uncertain for everybody just because, like, really no one knows, like, what is going to be announced, what isn't, what is. I mean, there is a Hyrule Saga, but, you know, with 2GG kind of, like, now doing their own thing, mm -hmm. it can be, you know, whatever it is, you know, it's not going to be the same. So we have yeah. to play by, like, new rules, and, you know, it, it just all depends on, like, who wants to do what. Do you, you know, know when the – did they have a date for that yet? Or? Hyrule Saga? Yeah. It's in June. June? Okay. Yeah, so we went from month to month to now, like, you know, first th their first event's going to be in June. So, yeah, I mean, events, like, they're, they're still, like, in the stages of, like, trying new things out. Mm -hmm. Like, having announcers, you know, like Kony and TK, having um, more than just, like, commentators in the set you know they're starting to branch out more to like roaming cameras like i saw genesis do a lot and experiment mm. with but you know a really good deal of the tech they have so you know we're, we're fitting me in where, where it works because like you start to force it and like it, it kills momentum so this this tournament for example like you know we were always a like i was always like a breath of fresh air for like the stream and sense of like you know a match ended and they had time to kill so we go to that as opposed to like all right set ended let's talk for 10 minutes that's yeah. that's like 10 minutes is such a long time it is so we would, we would just cut from that and just keep it you know keep it light keep it fun two three minutes talking hey hunger box what do you think oh you know this cool cool perspectives really all right last question i always ask somebody uh what's like community the smash community mean to you what does smash community mean yeah. to me huh that's funny because i've had a weird relationship with it recently only because you know we, we're growing at such a pace but also sometimes forgetting what's important and I feel that this event was a reminder that, like, it, it really is the relationships you make. Mm -hmm. Because I Definitely. think last year everybody got in the, got caught in the hurrah and the hippie, you know, sort of, like, pomp and circumstance of, like, esports and, like, all this stuff. And really events like this that have, like, a handful. Like, every PR is here except the PGR, you know. Mm -hmm. And 63 Floridians came out. They don't even come out to EVO as that number you know like yeah. everybody's here just playing meeting each other seeing each other again and i think last year with like all the fatigue of like events and it's just too much and burnout for a lot of people like they can't make those sort of trips mm -hmm. having this sort of like summit once again with everybody like that's that's what it is like all those relationships so that's what it is for me all right guys all right guys if you want to follow swore you can follow him at pg underscore swore on all right we'll put it right here so you guys can uh, type it in Peace out, peace out, guys. Enjoy New Show episode 24. Swar, 25. peace out, yeah. 25? Yeah. Bro, like, I'm having too much to drink now. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> All right, guys, peace out, man. Yeah.